Today, we're going to take a look at task three, all about task three. This will include information from your Making Good Choices document that's available for all handbooks and your own content specific handbook. Uh, even though this is for all handbooks, there are six significant differences with the special ed handbook and making good choices. So you should refer to those if you have questions. So there are nine steps that I've identified to completing task three. The first is to select an assessment. We'll talk more about all of these in detail. Then establish your evaluation criteria. Collect and analyze student work. Select three work samples. Document feedback. Plan for students' understanding and use of feedback. Provide evidence of academic language use. Respond to assessment commentary prompts and attach the assessment to the end of the commentary. Let's take a look at each of these steps. Step one. Step one is selecting an assessment. So uh, there's always uh, some consternation about what kind of student, um, what type of assessment you should choose. You definitely want to make sure that you choose a, an assessment that's given to the whole class during the learning segment that you teach. So this should be an assessment that's on the central focus of your learning segment. It should be a formal assessment. And it does not have to be summative. It could be formative. However, it does need to be formal. It needs to reflect each student's individual work, so it can't be um, work that's been done in pairs or in groups. And because this task focuses on your ability to analyze student work, self-assessments of, uh, of the students and peer assessments of the students are not appropriate. Those would be instructional activities you can use, but not appropriate for this assessment. So the purpose of the, uh, this task is to see how well you analyze assessment, not how well your students did on the assessment, or even how well your students learned during the learning segment that you just taught. But basically, it is all about your ability to analyze student work. So you're going to work, uh, analyze the work of all the students in your class, and you're going to select three student work samples from that for more discussion. You will need to uh, have checklists and rubrics submitted as um, feedback, but a checklist is not considered an assessment. Uh, and so that's it's the way you evaluate the assessment. This always comes up in PE because often, for example, uh, say that in PE or uh, the, the students do uh, they perform, um, they get into the bowling stance, for example, and get ready to talk through their cues for bowling. And the instructor may be standing there with a checklist or a rubric uh, as they watch the student perform. That is an acceptable assessment, but let's understand the difference between the assessment, which is the activity that you're having the student do, and uh, your watching and evaluating the student, that's the assessment. The evaluation criteria is the checklist. So it's it's really, uh, really important you not get those things confused. Depending on the field that you're teaching in, your students um, may be assessed in different ways. It may be best if, like for instance, if you're PE, um, that you uh, use video clips. Sometimes audio files, photographs, uh, often, for example, art, um, you, you need to have work samples that are photographs. You need to look at your handbook for details. Everyone needs to always be looking at their evidence chart, which is in the back of their handbook, very important. 
and they uh, need to be looking at that always. I recommend to my students that they take their evidence chart and put it in the front of their notebook that they've created. Also important to note, early childhood candidates, uh, you need to verify multiple sources of evidence that are required for your assessment task three. PE candidates, you must submit a video work sample and one to two written work samples in order to assess all three learning domains. So you also need to refer to your handbooks for that. So again, you want one assessment that should align with the central focus and at least one of your stated learning objectives. A frequently asked question is, can I just assess one learning objective? And the answer is yes. The assessment you choose may be formal or informal, formative or summative, but it needs to result in evidence of student learning to the evaluation of criteria you describe. I would argue that this task um, would not work for at all with an informal assessment. By definition, I don't see how informal assessment could be used here. If you're thinking of an informal assessment as thumbs up or thumbs down or walking around and, and checking student work informally, it just doesn't fit the definition. So we're looking at formal assessments that can be either formative or summative. You are expected to analyze your students' thinking and learning, so it's important not to um, stay at the lower level of blooms. You want to make sure that they, it's more than just recalling information and stating facts. They need to have some, show some uh, thinking, demonstrate some under, uh, excuse me, demonstrate some thinking in some way. So uh, you might want to rethink the use of multiple choice questions or single word response questions. Uh, use some that are maybe um, more like um, open-ended questions, writing samples, performance tasks, projects, problem sets, lab reports, other complex assessments would work well for this. So your second step is going to be, whoop, there's my dryer. So the second step is going to be um, establishing evaluation criteria. Now, this is something that often I find candidates are unfamiliar with doing, but th they're used to using a key or a rubric or a checklist. They just haven't thought of that as being the evaluation criteria. So how do you evaluate the student's work? The definition from your handbook, these are performance indicators or dimensions used to assess evidence of student learning. They indicate the qualities by which levels of performance can be differentiated. So uh, it could be a rubric, a point system, um, rules for awarding full versus partial credit. By uh, evaluation criteria may examine correctness, accuracy, cognitive complexity, sophistication, elaboration of response, quality of explanation, any of those. So how specific should your evaluation criteria be? The evaluation criteria should be clear and clear to you so that you can use it and clear to your score so that they can see how your evaluation criteria aligns with your objectives and your central focus. Um, so most importantly, you want to make sure that your evaluation criteria uh, aligns with the objectives of the learning segment, um, measures the outcome of your learning segment as related to the central focus, and here's something really important, addresses the elements of the subject-specific emphasis. The SSE. Now, if you've not heard of the SSE before, uh, you need to know about the SSE all the way through your handbook. It's really important. Everyone has a subject specific emphasis. To find yours, you can look, for instance, at rubric 15. 
So let's take a look at rubric 15. How does the candidate use the analysis of what young candidates, excuse me, <laughs> how does the candidate use the analysis of what young adolescents know and are able to do to plan next steps in instruction? So one of the things that I have learned from working with candidates as they work in task three is that they can perform better on the last prompt of next steps if they're planning ahead, thinking in terms of their SSE. You're not specifically told to do that anywhere except here is the only time anyone tells you that your evaluation criteria should be addressing the SSE. And yet it is very important for doing well on uh, rubric 15. So look here. To get a three, you want to propose general support that improves uh, student learning as related uh, to the assessed learning objectives and principles of theory and research are loosely connected. But to move above a three, it doesn't matter how great your next steps are. It doesn't matter how much you write. If you do not address this SSE, in your uh, writing of, of the last prompt, you won't move above a three. And that's just, it wouldn't matter if you had pages and pages of justified um, principles of research and theory. It won't matter because this is the most important part to move from a three to a four. So it's important that you stop right now. If you don't know what your SSE is, Please pause this video, go to your handbook, look at your rubric 15, or look at your rubric 1, and it will have your SSE in a bulleted list. Here's some examples of um, evaluation criteria. Here is someone who wrote um, a rubric. We've got the objectives here. They very cleverly, uh, and uh, this is a very good idea, written out the objective, and then they tell what was not satisfactory, what was satisfactory, what was mastery, and then describe those. It's a very simple rubric this person came up with. Good job. And here's one I like. This one is really kind of neat. Um, rubric for finding evidence and text. So the criteria, evidence from text, evidence supports the topic sentence. They've defined what mastery looks like for both of these, what proficient would be, and what below proficient would be. Then they've separated it even further to what would be near proficient, but not quite, and above proficient, but not quite mastery on this one. This is one of my students that just really went above and beyond, kind of amazing what she did. She took a science test, and she had all these different kinds of, of questions for the science test. So part one was matching. Part two was um, the student will identify properties of solids so they had to put an X in the right box. And then multiple, she had a multiple choice section. She had a true-false section. She had a short, two short answer sections and then gas law calculations. But when you take a look at what she's done here, she has really talked about how she's going to measure uh, whether or not they've mastered the objective or if they're approaching it or they're well below it. Um, and then they've got the different objectives listed here. And then she talks about for each part, she lists the objectives that she's assessing and she, where necessary, she tells how she will assign points. Um, same thing she does here. Uh, the SSE, she's very clearly saying all of these are going to be addressing the SSE of conceptual understanding. And then the short answer, she's got, um, again, small rubrics for each of the questions. And so it's just an amazingly good job. Um, this, this student made in the 60s uh, for her uh, EdTPA, 
and uh, she did an extraordinary job here. But I will say that something like this um, here is sufficient, and this is sufficient. It is sufficient enough to define what you believe to be um, important evaluative criteria, whether you do it simply, more complex, or the most complex, either way. So we're going to stop here for today. I don't want to uh, go any further at this time. To, I want you to stop and think about what you are going to uh, use as an assessment for your uh, task three. And I want you to come up with your evaluative criteria. Be sure to address your SSE, even though uh, the prompt, uh, for first prompt for task three, uh, most likely will not say so. You need to make sure that you are talking about your SSE. And in your evaluative criteria, make sure you are assessing what you say you're assessing. Okay, just a word to the wise for you history teachers. We'll pick on you again because these, this is where you blow it often. At this wonderful um, assignment that you've given the students to um, discuss, uh, maybe for instance, like um, the Great Depression, uh, perhaps they're to write a defense of the New Deal and take a position and write the argument. And so you have this great assignment you give to the students. And then when you start grading it, you are grading it and not assessing it. And that's often the problem. You need to look at how you're going to evaluate those students' uh, acquisition of the objectives. So can they, uh, are they evaluating the New Deal based on um, the sources and, and information that you've given them? Not did they put capital letters, periods, where you want them to. Not did they follow the 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 five paragraph essay format. None of those things um, give us any indication on the learning of the objectives that you're assessing. Remember, you aren't an English teacher, and although it's perfectly okay for you to give uh, feedback on uh, grammar and sentence structure, that does not tell us whether or not they've learned the information. So stay focused on your objectives. Uh, Use backward design, and you're going to be doing great. I will see you for step three in the next video. Have a good day.